Hi, I'm Chef Catherine in the Growing Chefs Ontario Classroom Kitchen, and I'm going to teach you how to make honey marshmallows. When you're a chef like me, you start to think about ingredients and try to make them even better. Marshmallows on their own are super tasty, but making them from scratch by yourselves just makes them amazing. Plus, they have the best meltability. For this recipe, the honey that's included absolutely shines through in the marshmallows and makes them so delicious. Before we get started, make sure you've read through the recipe completely, washed your hands, gathered your ingredients and mise en place. This recipe uses hot sugar, which can burn you very badly if you're not cautious. I recommend this recipe to some of our more advanced chefs, or if you're making this as a family, have a look and see when is the right time to bring in younger members of the family to keep things safe for everyone. The first thing that I need to do is to activate the gelatin. I have some packages of gelatin, which are probably the easiest things to work with. So each of these packages is about seven grams here. So I'm going to put two packages and each package is about two teaspoons too. So two packages go into the bowl. And then to activate the gelatin, I have some very cold water here. I'm going to pour in about half a cup and immediately you'll see it starts to gel. I'm going to just whisk it together and then leave this for about 20 minutes while we get together the rest of the ingredients for the marshmallows. The next part in making our marshmallows is to put together the ingredients for the sugar syrup. So I have here three quarters of a cup of water. I'm going to tilt that into the pan. And I have my sugar, which will go in, as well as my honey. I'm going to give it a little bit of a stir just to start with here, but it's very important not to stir as the sugar is cooking because what that will do is it will increase crystal formation and we don't want crystally marshmallows, we want soft gooey marshmallows. And the last thing, I'm just going to add the salt in here right now. As this mixture comes up to temperature, I have a candy thermometer here and what's great about it is it will record high temperatures. It also has a little clip on the side so I can just attach it to the side of my pan. You want to attach it in a way that it doesn't hit the bottom of the pan so that it doesn't record that temperature but it's recording the temperature of the syrup that's in it. I'm waiting for this temperature to reach 250 degrees. It's also important to have a pot that's large enough because this syrup is going to really boil up as it comes along and we do not want it to overboil on the pan. So make sure you choose a pot that's a little bit larger than you think you need. You can really see that as it bubbles, the mixture will rise up in the pan. Just keep a close watch on it and if it's coming up too high, immediately turn it off so you do not have sugar bubbling over the edges. Right now, it's getting close. It's at about 225 degrees Fahrenheit. Something that I think is very interesting about making a candy such as marshmallows is just watching the sugar solution and how the sugar will kind of change states as it's going. Before the bubbles were really big and foamy when it was at about 220 degrees Fahrenheit. Right now it's just about 225 but the foam has subsided and it's a lot smaller bubbles and the solution is really, really starting to reduce. As it gets even closer to our candy temperature, it will change even further. All right, my sugar syrup has hit 250, so I'm gonna turn it off the heat immediately. And you can see it's really darkened in color. So I wanna let this cool for a second before I touch it. It's very hot sugar. The next step is just for me to pour this into the egg whites, which I'm gonna to start to whip up first. Be very, very careful when you are lifting this pot, because like I said, everything's hot. I'm using a cloth to pick up the thermometer because it's been in the pot, it'll be very hot. The foam is subsided in the sugar solution here, so I'm just going to try to scrape out the gelatin. You can see it's really gelled and just add it into the sugar solution and it will melt in there quite nicely. It'll foam up a little bit when you're doing that, but that's okay. Just give it a quick stir here and it'll incorporate very nicely. And we can just set that aside for just a moment and I'm going to start to whisk up the egg whites. <coughs> I have four egg whites here, which I'm going to just tip into my stand mixer. 
If you don't have a stand mixer at home, you can do this with a hand beater. It's just going to take a lot of work, so you'll have to build up your muscles, but you can do it. I'm going to lift up my stand mixer, and if your whisk doesn't quite hit the bottom, it may not foam up as much as you want to to start. You can just start it with a whisk on your own, but I think that this is going to be okay here. So I'm just going to turn on the mixer, and I want to see a little bit of frothiness in the egg whites before I start to carefully pour this sugar solution into my stand mixer. So you can see that the egg whites look nice and foamy. So what I'll do now is I'll carefully tip the syrup into the bowl here with the mixer running. Just a small amount at a time. So we just want to mix this on very high speed for about 10 to 12 minutes. This solution is really going to increase in volume and it's going to get a lot lighter and fluffier as we go along. The time to stop is when the edges of the bowl are cool to the touch. They're at room temperature. Right now it feels very warm, so I just need to keep mixing for 10 to 12 minutes until it's nice and cool. The marshmallows have finished whipping up. If I hold the bowl here, it does not feel warm anymore. So I'm going to take it off and we need to work pretty quickly because this stuff will set fairly fast. So it's really nice and thick and sticky. You can see now that's great. So what I'm going to do before I deal with this is I'm going to prepare my pan. I've chosen a baking dish that is about roughly this half of the size of a sheet tray and I've lined it with a piece of parchment paper here, you can see. And I want to make sure that I spray it very well with non-stick spray so that I don't put the marshmallows in here and they get stuck. And while I'm at it, I'll spray my spatula too to help it not stick. I have a mixture of icing sugar and cornstarch and I'm just going to put that into a bowl and mix it together here gently with my fingers and then I want to just gently coat uh, the inside of this pan here which will also help prevent it from sticking. I'm just going to do it with my hands. You can also do it with a sieve if you'd like to and don't be afraid to get uh, quite a bit of cornstarch and sugar in there. Worst case scenario you'll just tap it off at afterwards but this will really help it prevent the sticking. So now I'll just scrape as much of this marshmallow mixture as possible with my spatula off of the whisk here. And then I'm just gonna scrape it into my container here. The gelatin, the more it cools, the more it'll start to firm up. So that's why you need to work fairly quickly here. So just using the spatula, I'm gonna just try to get it as evenly as possible to all the parts of the pan. You can use your fingers if you need to here, uh, but just give them a little bit of a spray ahead of time so that they're not so sticky. If your marshmallows are setting pretty fast like mine are, I've just taken an additional piece of parchment paper here and sprayed it quite well. And so instead of my fingers being a sticky mess, I can use that to kind of press the marshmallows into shape and flatten it. You could also use just another pan to kind of press it on top too. So you're going to make a little bit of a mess doing this, but that's okay. You can see that the parchment paper really helped to smooth out the marshmallow and push it to the sides of the pan. So I'm just going to uh, tip some of my mixture into the sieve and just kind of dust it all over the top of my marshmallows here. So these need to cure for about 24 hours. They're going to dry out and become a lot more firm. So I have a batch that I made yesterday, so we'll have a look at that and I'll show you how to finish them off. So these are the marshmallows that I made yesterday. They feel a lot firmer. Hopefully they'll just slide out of the pan. If they're giving you a little bit of resistance, you can just kind of use your knife to loosen them from the edges of the pan too. And also a little bit of non-stick spray on that knife will help as well. So I'll just make sure that they're going to come away smooth. And remember, I put a piece of parchment paper on the bottom, so that will help to get it off the bottom. I'm going to tip it over and hope for the best.
Beautiful. There we go. They came right out. And I'm just going to peel off that parchment paper there. So from here, I have some more of that icing sugar and cornstarch solution. I'm just going to cut the marshmallows into cubes and then roll them in the icing sugar and cornstarch and put them into another container. You could absolutely use cookie cutters to make them into whatever shape you wanted to. You just have a little bit of delicious marshmallow scraps to eat up as well then. Don't be afraid to get your knife a little bit more grease. It'll help you to cut the marshmallows. So once I have a couple strips here, I can just go and cut them into cubes. And these edges are a little bit stickier. So like I said, if we coat it in this sugar cornstarch solution, that's gonna help them from sticking to each other. Our marshmallows are finished. They have the perfect jiggle ability factor here. They're gonna be so tasty and will be the perfect ingredient for amazing s'mores. There's a lot of marshmallows. If you want, you can keep them in a container that's airtight at room temperature for about one week, or if you'd like to, freeze them out and pull them out as needed. Make sure to watch our video to make the perfect honey graham cracker as well.